Greetings, people of the internet. It is I, Eyeshadow01. Or, as we're going to the main, the save select menu, this is Donkus McDonker. <laughs> and today, welcome to the very first episode of Need for Speed Shift. Now, here's the thing you have to understand is that this is actually one of my favorite Need for Speed games ever developed. And the reason why I say that this is one of my favorite Need for Speed games is that. It, it shows this form of Le Mans racing, and it, it shows a different style than what we have from Black Box, which was the mainly the street racing and the car customization, as well as the story mode and characters. And is a lot more different than Need for Speed in general, when it comes to supercars or fat sports cars being chased by cops, going down the highways and or freeways, and one racer winning the race as first place. No modifications, no car customizations, no story, no characters, nothing like that. However, this has been taken on a different toll by Slight. This was one of the Need for Speed games that was actually made in a different toll, and this was developed by Slightly Mad Studios. Need for Speed Shift. What does it represent? To be honest, it actually represents Le Mans racing. And it even has drifting as far as I am concerned. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start the career mode. You'll race on world renowned tracks, gain entry to new competitions, and drive the most sought after cars in the world. This is actually gonna take a long while. This, these cutscenes are unskippable. Test lap. Alright. We're about to do ourselves a little test lap. All right, it's race time. I am ready to race when I am done with okay, this. Uh, is recording. Take a lap and we'll get some settings dialed in for you. Hold on, I think it's still a little bit too. The thing is, it's actually hard for me to get the right settings that I want, so that way I could hear myself do the commentary. Meanwhile, I am playing the game at the same time. So I do have to apologize for going back and forth to the settings. So I set up the audio. S oh crap! So if I have set up the audio settings, I'm still trying to work on them throughout this video for this game. Now, if there happen, if the gameplay is a lot more louder. Now, if the gameplay happens to be a lot more louder than the commentary that I provide, please leave a comment down below to tell me about the settings needed. What volume settings I need to change within the audio for this game overall and let me be honest I'm still gonna have to tinker around with those settings as soon as I get through this race alrighty so actually before we get started into the story career to the story we're gonna do the actual race so overall, the previous time I played this, I played this on easy, so I'm actually going to play it on medium. And to be honest, I have to keep in mind that I made, uh, I was trying to make a clip as to this gameplay, and realistically, I had not been able to do so because it, the, uh, the audio quality inside this game was a lot more louder. The audio inside this game is a lot more louder than the commentary. Alright, it's race time. Alright, here we go. So we're actually gonna get through the first race, and that was a Ford Mustang I hit. So far, I'm doing okay. For my most part, oh crap, I've been hit. It's never a good thing to be hit by another player. That's the main issue you want to keep in mind. Though, they can, they can be tricky. However, this is an AI player, so it's a different story. You might ask why it's gonna be tricky. If you think about, um, if you think about it, there are no penalties for crashing against other racers inside this game. So that's that's the thing. So mainly, you got like a mix of flat out with Need for Speed, and the result is this game, 
where you could crash into other rival racers, damage them, I think wreck them, probably. And you don't get any penalties inside this game. However, the only penalty you will get is cutting the track. That's when you're trying to go in the grass or and or in the dirt. And really, those surfaces don't do well for cars like these inside this game. It would have been interesting if Need for Speed Shift had the had rally racing. However, it was not implemented to be the idea of first by Slightly Mad Studios and EA. I think there was a Need for Speed game that had represented rally racing, as far as I'm concerned. I'm just not too certain, though. So far, so good, and across the line, we've actually won. Now. We could go ahead and get our first car. Well, that just won us enough money to get a car and start our own career. All right, having a look around within the cars. Last time I checked, last time I remember, I was playing with a Cosworth. But at this rate, I don't really know what car I really want to start off with. The thing is, this game. I mean, if you think about it. Well, this is not really what most people would think, but this is my critical thought process, and it will probably trigger a lot of people. So, just to give you a fair warning, if you get triggered real easily by this thought process, I'm warning you right now, you could skip ahead of the video for a few seconds. If you want to listen in, then feel free to. This would be Need for Speed Shift series. Shift, not shit. Okay? could have been I mean based on how the racing goes on Pro Street the Need for Speed sh series Need for Speed shifts shift to one could have been Need for Speed I feel like it would have been Need for Speed Pro Street uh, track racing evolved however for Need for Speed shift two Probably Need for Speed Shift 3, or Need for Speed Pro Street 3, but except it's pretty much the same thing as Shift 1. The only thing that's changed between these two games, Shifts 1 and 2, were the addition of new cars and new rivals. And plus some things have changed overall. Such as the menu, probably some of the gameplay, maybe even new some maps to go and race inside of. Inside this game, there's a golf. So I'm not just certain if Kudo HS has actually played this game before. I'm actually gonna see. I'm actually gonna see if he did real quickly. He actually made a few videos in regards to Need for Speed Shift. One was one year ago from what I hate and liked about Need for Speed Shift. It which is which wasn't the Need for Speed Marathon Marathon 2020 and it was his Twitch streams. Uh, four months ago, he put in another Need for Speed Shift video called Unnecessary or Underrated. Nes unnecessary? I probably wouldn't say that. Because I think Slightly Mad Studios wanted to go for more of a Le Mans style racing game. Underrated? Criminally. Criminally underrated game. Even though it's criminally underrated, I like the game. However, just too uncertain. I think Kudu Kudu pretty much started off with a Chevrolet, but does he not realize the Volkswagen was there? Unless he was in the stream of the game when he was playing the game, he was making a stream. I think he saw the Volkswagen Golf. I'm just not too sure. And then again, we're gonna. But I'm also going to try to pull out a... When Kudo HS literally sees a Volkswagen Golf GTI inside a deep speed under most wanted 05 and carbon. The few lines. The Golf is better. That is the only car you'll see him drive. And realistically, I get that it does good on handling, but however... I don't really like the feel of a front-wheel drive car. I mean, like, they're not that bad. It's just that it would feel more weird than a all-wheel drive and a rear-wheel drive. So, hands down, I think, 
What was the most underrated car that people would never drive inside this game? Like, that is my one concern. Like, really, what is the number one underrated car in Need for Speed Shift? I need to know real badly. So I'm actually gonna look up online and see what car it was. I think I have a feeling it's this Honda Civic SI, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and take it. Besides, this is the same car I drove when I was playing the PS3 variant a long time ago. So I'm gonna take this car. Now let's go ahead and quickly customize the car. First things first, weight reduction. That's the first one we need to work on. Um, audio. Why is my menu not making any sound effects? What is wrong with me for speed? Uh, work on that and then put that uh, Engine I'm gonna put this I don't have any we don't have enough for race parts, so we're actually gonna remain on to stage one So we got brakes tires engine and drive train Stage one and we got re weight reduction stage one equipped as well However, we will eventually evolve through inside this game, upgrade the car even further, see how it goes. But first things first, I am actually going to go ahead and paint the car before we continue on to today, to the next race. Alright, blue. So, without further ado, let's continue on to the career. First things first, race coalition, race at Alpha. Okay. Alpha tall or whatever. I really don't know. I jumped straight to the race without looking at the name and trying to correct myself. My sincere apologies. But without further ado, let's get to the race. All right, a few seconds to green here. We want to drive to the podium. Have fun. Be careful. I don't think people have ever drove the Civic like this inside this game. Or, I mean, there probably was some people, but it was kind of rare. Uh, I may have said that I complained of how I said that front wheel, I, front wheel, card, front wheel drive cards are weird when driving them. You might say, why did you buy the Civic Si? It's a front wheel drive car. Well, the main thing is... Memories... Memory lane, I drove this car inside of the PS3 version. So yeah, that's mainly the issue. I just bumped into that guy, into that Toyota. Now there's a Nissan up ahead, and that's an Audi, if I'm not mistaken, or a seat. I think it was either a seat or a Honda Civic. Oh no, that's a damn Volkswagen. Anyways, inside of this game, I think the under fewest underrated tier one cars are either this Civic or that Seat Cobra. Because as far as I'm concerned, no AI is driving that car whatsoever. And when I mean that car, obviously I mean the seat. Trying to get through this race nice and steadily. This is the one game that does not VTEC allow to kick in that easily. And across the line. First place. That was nice and easy. Here's the one thing you need to keep in mind about this game. About Need for Speed in general. Need for Speed the way I see, the way that Black Panther sees it, it's kind of interesting. However, he's not getting the bigger picture when it comes to Need for Speed overall. Alright, go, 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 go. That's an S2000. 
And I got a bad start. Oh no, never mind. The seats are not rare to see inside this game. Well, kind of, but... Oh, I just took out a guy's light. Oh, shit. Yeah, you see, right there, that's the penalty. That's the warning. You cut the track. Won't count for the lap. That's where I'm trying to get at. Shit. <sighs> this 2000 just screwed me over. So let's go ahead and get this race coalition done. Oh, but before we do that, we obviously need to upgrade the car. So let's go ahead and roam around what kind of upgrades we could do to the car. Body kits, obvious. okay, they increase the handling as far as I'm concerned. I'm gonna need a shorter final drive because the car is lacking some speed and I need speed to win races. That's the one thing this game, the cars, the car I'm driving is lacking and that's the one thing the car needs to be worked on. All right, let's do this. Listen to the, listen to the whine on that, oh crap, that whine on the transmission I was about to say. So I shorten out the gears, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that gives me some sort of advantage against these guys. Oh boy. My braking is not too perfect. Oh. Yeah, I'm not doing too good. I'm gonna have to try to catch up. It's gonna be hard, but I need to try. I'm not a big fan of driving the front wheel drive cars in general when it comes to certain racing games. And the reason why is because some a certain pieces like the braking could be off for the certain majority of them. It's honestly one of the fewest things about driving a front wheel drive car is that some of the cars will have not the greatest braking. I tried braking that corner as much as possible but it wasn't... The braking doesn't really push itself to do that. Look at that. Look at that. That break the breaking line was utter dog water. This game is not the best. It's not perfect. But it is quite something for one of being one of my favorite need for speed games. I have enjoyed it so far. Tapped on that guy. We caught up to the Honda S2000. I'm gonna try to see if I could get past him. This Honda, this S2000 is not gonna be getting away that easily. Come on. All right, we're on to lap two. We're gonna see about doing. Oh no! I think I'm probably gonna hate this race more when it comes to driving this car. And that's the reason why I say that. Let me explain to you why you gotta love this. Will we ever get another Need for Speed game that is based on Le Mans racing? Not in a million years. You know why? Because there's not gonna be any studio that knows how to make Le Mans racing games that are gonna help EA make a Need for Speed game based on Le Mans. And by that, I mean pretty much making a shift, Need for Speed Shift 3. At all. I mean, we've overcome to that conclusion at least around after slightly mad studios got acquired by namco but i'm still go i'm still i'm still believing that's going to be true for the next set of for the next decade or so that is being said unless ea games is actually shut down and or acquired by some bigger company to make them a much more better gameplay game development company than what they are as of now. I mean, surely enough, the people who work at EA Games is gonna hate it, but if they do so happen to be acquired, that's what they're gonna have to live with. It's too damn bad. It's not. It's their fault that they made bad Need for Speed games. And not only that, bad Battlefield games, bad Medal of Honor games, as of today. And the reason why I say as of today is because they provide, these games provides bugs and or glitches, and yet they don't 
let the game studios that they have making these games properly develop them and fix the bugs and or glitches. Or even provide updates for their future con games. I mean, Need for Speed games? No. Uh, Battlefield games? Uh, Battlefront games? Probably. But these updates aren't even to fix any of the bugs and or glitches. And plus, it doesn't even... Plus, the Battlefront games... The newer Battlefront games they made so far doesn't even provide any fair gameplay phys physics and mechanics. Like, there's other dog water. And plus, what made it worse is that online players that spent their money just to buy the in-game purchases they have in EA in Battlefront. This being said for Battlefront 2. And plus, this is common, but the higher ranking players actually get a much more better advantage than all the other lower levels. However, <clears throat> still, and the whole and the whole entire buying the in-game stuff was a controversy that it made <clears throat> it, that uh, there pretty much a few nations gave EA the lawsuit, as far as I'm concerned, and that they will most likely ban it from their countries. And probably even, um, probably ban the game as a whole. I guess that's probably the concrete solution right there for certain nations. I don't like talking about politics, and I don't like getting involved with controversies, but if, it, but if EA made the controversy as to the whole entire in-game purchases, then the fault's on them. That, that's not my problem. I mean, I do own Battlefront 2017, the second game. However, I don't play it as much because I know it was going to be a bad game. Plus, it's ultimately ridiculous when it comes to playing the game online. The, the game's online. It's just, it's the game itself is just stupidly annoying. Even Battlefront 2 from 2005 does better than that. Go, go, go. Oh, <laughs> that... A86 got knocked out by a wall. I'm gonna hit the blue thing. Yes, I did. You see, the braking on this car is bad. So unless you're smart, so you should play a smart move that I did not do so as of this time. Do not get this car unless you know what the hell you're doing. I, on the most hand, do not know what I'm doing. And I cut the track. I should have not done that. Slow down. It's coming through, focus. I'm gonna cut in front of you. I mean, if it's a normal circuit race, when it comes to that penalty, and that hurt, I don't really care about the lap time for a normal race. What I care about is getting this race done. Overall, I don't really care what the best time I have. I'm not the kind of person that likes to go do a time trial, beat their own personal record. I like to do the races and get through it real well. Sometimes I will not do it so well because I'm doing plenty of dirty racing inside of this game. But still, my, I, I rest my point. I rest my point to be the case. Alright, let's do this. So, the thing about this time races is that you want to keep in mind as to your time. You want to try to beat everyone else's record so far. And in order to do that, you need to set the fastest time you've made it through any given lap. So me, I am going to go ahead and cut in front of everyone, do some dirty racing, and try to get through there. Also, I'm going to try to beat the... I need to try to beat... My lap time needs to be either in the middle or below a minute. Oh, I, I just beat the one minute lap time. My fastest is 58 seconds. Sheesh, it was actually lucky considering that I'm driving a car that had that has bad braking 
even if upgraded. It just depends on how, how the reaction time of the braking, but not only that, it also depends on how much force you're using. Alright, we got another minute left before the race is over. Gotta love the, how you take damage, your screen starts to become, just change. It kind of reminds me of PGR, like uh, Project Gotham Racing 3 and Project Gotham Racing 4. It's the final lap. Can I manage? Probably. I'm assuming that everyone is driving slowly because they crossed the line before I did, but I won't even- Yeah, it shows everyone has finished. But it won't even matter because I am about to finish this race and I'm finishing in first place. For these lap times and across the line. Look, everyone has got like a minute or so. Now is the perfect time for wider tires and a massive brake cylinder. Alright, let's go. I just reached, what, 30 kilometers per hour real easily. Okay, so, so far so good. I'm at least in the fourth position. Move out of my way, Scion. I'm gonna win this race, not you. So you sit down right back there. So I feel like I should go by saying this. I want to actually work on playing Need for Speed. And this is not gonna be the only Need for Speed I'm gonna be playing as far as I'm concerned. I want to try to go back to the older Need for Speeds that Black Box Studios have played and made so far. Just considering that this is not the only childhood game I've ever played, there was also, also Underground, Underground 2, Most Wanted, and Carbon, and Pro Street. So I might try to go back to those, but for now I'm going to focus on trying to make this as much as I possibly can. No one but no one has yet to beat the record of Donkus McDonker. <laughs> no one so far. Even though the Donkus McDonker sounds like a stupid name, at least he's kicking some serious ass inside this rig inside of this game. <clears throat> and across the line. Close to start here. Couple seconds till start, just a couple of seconds. Alright. Let's Green, go. Green, hit it. Hit it. The seat in front of me. I need to try to get in front of the car. Oh, that's not the way I wanted that to be. Okay, so that was bad. But I can try to do better this time. The thing I need to do is just try not to touch anyone and that should be about it. And first place. Oh, I gotta perform a clean lap. Cross the line. Set a new record by a few short seconds. So Nick Cooper, Ryan Cooper first brother probably is inside of this game that's interesting enough for me to know I guess they didn't want Ryan Cooper to feel lonely so I guess they gave him a brother unless Nick Cooper is like a father then I it's a otherwise unless they're not can canonically unless they're not canonically brothers or a father and son that's a concern. And I just got passed and I finished. Race time. Go, 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 go. Oh, and I just flipped them over. <laughs> I'll get a good replay on that eventually. 
As of now, we're actually going to be focusing on the race. So, I feel like this is like NASCAR when you're just driving an oval. The only thing is the track feels a lot more shorter than just an actual NASCAR uh, track. I'm not too certain if this is correct, but probably, if not mistaken, some of the assets from this game in maybe Shift 2 or Shift 2 probably were taken and they were used for Need for Speed Heat. I mean, for the racing, at least like some things like this. Pit stops, as an instance. However, I don't really know. I, I can't be too certain. So, yeah. As I said once before, this game does not know any, does not have any quarrel with Dirty Racing. So realistically, I cannot get a penalty for crashing into other people's cars. The only thing that I'll get a penalty from inside of this game is, is if I end up cutting the track. Realistically, I don't want to cut the track inside of... A Le Mans racing st type style game. DB9. DB9 for all drivers in today's competition. This is going to be an interesting challenge because I'm going to drive an Aston Martin and there's going to be a lot of other people driving the Aston Martin. If I did, I would have liked to modify the car. However, I don't own the car. We got uh, 10 seconds to start. This is it. All about the driver. So show him what you got. Three, go, go, go. Have fun. Everyone, oh boy, that's a lot of racers. Look at how many racers there are inside this race. Uh, lead for an entire lap. I will try to do that. Uh, this is going to be tricky to catch up on first place. And I say that because everyone is driving the same car, so we got the same performance. However, the drivers are a lot different than I anticipated. And how many times you crash into a wall. You don't want to forget about that either. Realisticality is not there when it comes to Le Mans races, considering that you're not able to go into a pit stop. And I just wrecked that guy. And that dirty driving is illegal. Like crashing into other people's cars. And that there's a yellow and a red light for that. To either halt the race or... To slowly drive around the track. Uh, trying to get to first place is a concern now. I must have racked up a lot of points after crashing into that guy. That probably is a given. Uh, oh no, I'm rubber banding. I, th is that illegal? I mean, rubber banding is illegal inside of a racing game, but uh, so far I just did that. Still driving though, keep on going, try to pass through this guy as much as I can possibly do so. And I took first place from the guy. I'm drifting, I'm losing my grip. Racing inside this game is quite something, however, I am not too far certain about drifting. I feel like drifting would be a lot more trickier than just street race, than just actually track racing. And to be honest, it actually is a lot more different. Shit. Okay, Aston Martin should not trust me to drive this car into any of their races anymore. <laughs> Look how damaged it is. The trunk is opening on its own. It looks like it's talking to me. Nope, I was about to land. I was about to land on my side. Aston Martin in the home state, home, home, knee. Aston Martin inside of the home, uh, home nation of the United Kingdom, or England. That's what some people call it. I feel like United Kingdom and England are both the same thing. However, I feel like then again. Some people will probably say that's not true. They're both different. I don't really know. I'm just assuming things. Don't go judging my... Don't go judging me. I just... I just think what I believe. And I got second. 
I am asleep. I am not paying attention to the race very well. Time to do the Lotus game grace. However, this track is from Project Gotham Racing. Actually, it's it's shared, so it's not only from Project Gotham Racing Four. Every other racing game that, is, that resembles a Le Mans, Le Mans racing in a way share, shares the same concept. They're using this map <clears throat> for the game as a whole. And I'm just quite surprised how Need for Speed pulls it off on their own perspective. Like EA and Slightly Mad Studios in other words. So in the previous race, I was just literally racing down to try to get the first place. And I ended up rear-ending a guy at high speed and just sent him flying to oblivion okay all i have was just some scratched paint inside this car but that's fine i'm sure it'll be buffed out later i just need to get through this race I'm trying to follow the racing line as much as i possibly can it's just not too easy to do this kind of stuff that's the thing you're wondering why because if you mass because I'm trying to master these corners and when you master these corners you actually gain an extra amount of points like you get to a times two multiplier at a certain rate and we have crossed the line I said done we won it's probably not the best need for speed game that people have probably gained the interest in playing but to me it's something uh, I like it some other people may not and that's okay because really this is realistically they don't need to they don't have to like the game to for me to be an asshole the only thing that makes me an asshole is if the people are the assholes themselves so yeah that's a different story and here's the thing, this is the one Need for Speed game I enjoy the most, and this is the critical standpoint of me saying that you enjoy, you need to enjoy what you have as of then, instead of what you're getting as of now. And here's the reason why, because the way I see it, nothing is gonna, the, the things that we wanted, the way they were before, is never gonna come back to the, what we have as of now. In in a million years, it will never happen. So, realistically, be disappointed all you want. Complain to me as much as you like. I am stating what I believe is correct. Won't change my mind for a long while. Anyways, let's go ahead and do this at the Laguna Secta. Laguna Seca. Alright, so we got some lunar cars. The only thing is the cars are all stock, so realistically, I don't really want to just drive a stock car. I mean, they don't look that bad, that's the thing. But, overall, I just don't want to race them. I prefer something that is onto my own likings. Some of you may ask, how come I don't put liveries on this car? I have not put the mind on to doing that, actually. Okay, that was a good start. That was a good start. I landed on the green. Okay, so the interior's got a newer set of gauges and a steering wheel, as well as some seats. Which is great. Give the car interior a different look. Uh, everyone's inside of sports cars. Meanwhile, I'm inside of a shitty... <laughs> I'm inside of a shitty Civic. Hey, it's not as... Le it's at least not as bad as DDGX 28's Eco Economy Sedan, which is a shit box, of course. He doesn't even know how to rice the car, so he thinks he's a ricer. I'm like, give me a break. He couldn't even put a body kit on it. He couldn't put any custom rims. He's that lazy to do that kind of stuff. And yet, other ricer is probably the guy that likes big rims and put them on the Camaro, does a better job than him. I mean, the guy with big rims, I don't think he knows very much about cars. 
But if he likes to put big rims on cars, I would think he, that guy's a big. This guy's a car guy to his own extent. <laughs> then the Honda. Oh, I flipped two. No, no, I have flipped one car over. To an extent where he likes. I was trying to say to an extent where he likes big rims on his cars. Is big rims meant to be a trend? If people like big rims on their cars, why not make them donks? I mean, that would have made sense. Making them like donks could, you know, make it look nicer in their own perspectives. Having the car hi hired up a little bit makes some wheel arches for the gigantic ass rims. Don't make it look like a monster truck. If you try to make a monster truck with big rims, you'd know you're, you're high as shit. Or that you're drunk as hell. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying what I believe. Overall, I'm not doing too bad on this race. And this is realistically a custom race, so... It's not part of campaign. However, I will be continuing on the story. We are gonna do the manufacturer races and then we will be able to go ahead and select ourselves a new car to modify. But that's in due time, not just this instant. I think I'll swap this car, oh crap, for the Escort, because I did very well on the Escort once before, before I restarted the whole entire progress I made so far. The only w reason I just restarted the whole entire progress is because I... The previous clips I made so far were actually bad, and that I couldn't actually use them for the video. So I had, it made me have to restart here and there, and... Yeah. It's because the audio. I'm having a hard time trying to adjust the audio. It's because this game is really loud once you start it up. It's really loud, and realistically, you can't hear in, in this in the com video. You can't hear any commentary when you have a lot, a little, very loud audio coming from a game like this. That's unless you change the settings. Well, my point still stands. Oh boy, I'm doing bad. I'm doing bad. I went into the dirt. That's not meant to happen. And we have gone across the line. That was quite some race. <laughs> I just hit the guy on the rear end. I think, or we had him surrounded and he ended up flipping out to his roof. So far, I've already made the livery for the car. But as of now, I am going to go ahead and call it off for the day. I would like to thank every single person who has watched this video so far. If you want to see more videos in regards to Need for Speed uh, Shift, feel free to... Feel free to let me know what you think. Do you want to see more of this or do you not want to? I am curious enough to know for myself. And with this being said, I will be... I want to keep in note that I'm actually going to be making videos on not only this Need for Speed, but I am also planning to make a video on Need for Speed Underground when I have the chance to do so. So you keep yourself aware in due time. I'm still, I'm still saying as of now. Anyways... Thank you everyone for watching this video. Feel free to leave a like, a comment, and a subscribe if you at your own will. And this is me, Ice Shadow Zero One, saying I will see you on to the next episode.